Hey guys, welcome back to Stellar Sessions. Today I bring in Anthony Lee, Lee Rand Hirschkorn, and Brandon Young. How are you doing, guys? Doing well. Good morning. Good morning, Fantastic. good evening, good afternoon. We're all in different locations, aren't we? Yes. So today's subject, as much as it pains me to talk about it, but we're going to be talking about guru bashing today. Um, so I've invited you guys in because... I'm seeing it more and more commonly appearing in groups. Anthony, this is basically me magpie in here. This was an original post in Anthony's group where he was talking about this situation of how it's starting, could get out of control. Bear in mind, we're all involved in communities and I'm not here to defend. If anyone's been bad, then you, know, you can call them out, you can do all those things. I'm just looking at the, the repercussion side of these things. So. Um, we're not going to name any names here. We're going to talk about the subject because I'm not here to flame out anyone. There's, I'm, I'm talking it from an angle of what do we do here in terms of level responsibility? This is growing into a trend. Now, Lee Ren, you flamed out people on your page, admittedly, mm -hmm. and then you've, you've documented and shown the proof. Brandon, I mean, you, you're a serial flamer. I mean, you've done a few people on this. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, in the U.S., when you get called a serial flamer. <laughs> I, I don't know what a flamer in the U.S., but I'm going to say... Tuesday night. It has yeah, different implications. Oh, okay, right. So we're, we're, I'm, I'm talking about blowing people up, burning, you know, burning people out on, on this subject, you know, because what happens is yes. the community comes behind it like a pack of wolves as well, and they go in. And I'm not saying that's the wrong thing. I'm not saying that's the right thing. But people get involved and, and then suddenly the, the Michael Jackson memes come out with the popcorn and these posts end up going semi-viral within the community. So I've done enough chatting now. I'd like to bring Anthony into the conversation in a moment. But Lee Ren, talk to me. I know why you do it, but talk to the audience why you do that in, 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 in essence. Sure. Um, one, because well, a few reasons. So I would say first, I mean, it's an emotional thing, right? I mean, this is not like a, a sometimes like a strategic move of, of calling somebody out. Sometimes yeah. I might see something that just angers me so much to see somebody doing something wrong to, to other people that it just pisses yeah. me off, right? And, and the, only, the only way to, to get out and vent a little bit is to go on my wall and, and put it there. So that's from sort of this... Uh, you know, emotional being being pissed off to see somebody from, uh, you know, somebody taking advantage of sellers in a way that I don't like, um, in a way that I wouldn't like done to me. So it's definitely not like some strategic decision related to my business. It's like, hey, I'm pissed off that this person is doing things this way. I don't like it. I'm going to go call them out. So that's one. Yeah. Two, yeah. you know, I think also, uh, you know, uh, as like, somebody that has some some level of of reach maybe an influence like on my wall that if i can save somebody from what i think is being scammed in in a certain way then i feel like maybe i have maybe maybe besides this emotional sort of anger myself maybe i have a certain level of responsibility also yeah. to warn my audience the people who follow me like hey don't fall into this trap so i think it's sort of a, a combination um but more so anything it's it's you know uh it's if if i feel like i know about something or something really that's about something somebody has done and you know as an example right we said you know we won't name names but right uh somebody who owns a software company creating a piece of software to take advantage of sellers in some way to buy you know to take uh to to you know get coupons at 90 percent off by you know that are that are mistakes from sellers somebody doing that to me is almost even though it's legal and it's all okay it's almost criminal and to me that pisses me off and getting on my wall and calling them out is my way of venting letting out anger and also letting letting people know about it so i, I think it's sort of a, a combination you know you uh you know i think all of us uh for the most part you know like like this seller community that we're part of we've made you know good friendships we see people at events yeah. um and seeing somebody try to take advantage of that community kind of pisses me off yeah. um, and so my only outlet is to go on my wall and say hey hey this this person's a you know whatever a jerk because they're doing this this and that and i don't like it 
no, that makes total sense. And Brandon, your take on it? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, as Lira said, um, it's, it's something that we almost feel an obligation for because we, we can see that the information being uh, disseminated is, is wrong. Um, in particular, you know, we're not naming names, unfortunately. I would love to. But, um, you know, there are guys out there who are just professional course sellers. And so they, they go ahead and uh, when they take it to the level of taking old content, repurposing it, and then selling it, that might be that might be okay in some con in some instances if the content is okay but if they go to the extent of using fake screenshots or using fake testimonials or having like a friend or an employee uh swear by it and show fake screenshots in order to sell that that information and then you also find out that that information isn't very good or relevant um it just and then I have, you know, I've, I've had personally at least a half a dozen people who have fallen into the trap of, of from this professional marketer, right, that, uh, that sells these courses. They're just professional course seller, and they've got courses on many different subjects. It just really bothers me because they come to me that they, that after they've already lost money, and, and they, they might be in a position where that was, you know, made up the majority of their savings. Some people overextend to get to for that chance at freedom and and for the the opportunity that that amazon can present as a business and so they can put themselves and their families in danger and it like like Leon said i mean i feel an obligation to to call that out i mean there are a lot of other coaches and people with courses where the content may not be as good as someone else's or ours or whatever but at least they're real sellers they're giving up-to-date information and they're they're working with their students, and 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 the students have a chance at success, um, and I'm okay with that. But when it comes to someone who's not really a seller, who's just trying to sell course content and taking advantage of people, I think that uh, that person needs to be called out. And 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 as, to to answer your your concern that uh, that it becomes like a cesspool where um, this Amazon coaching environment starts to become a mudslinging contest. Yeah. You know, I, I think that there's a lot to be said for, you know, for that. I, I agree that you don't want to get into a toxic situ situation, but I think that's better in some instances also because it's going to create an environment where people come in and they're immediately on guard and they're going to do their homework first. Yeah. And you have to prove that you deserve their business before they just start getting taken advantage of. Yes. Yeah. Because it's not just the 997, the 2997, the 1497 or X97 that, that's, that someone's going to lose. It's going to be that plus the money that they spend on their first product that fails. Yeah. And that's, that's the extra money. That's where people get hurt. If, if someone has bad information and then they go spend five or 10 or $15,000 on inventory and they're flushing it down the toilet, that's, that's more money than most people can afford to lose. And it's really important that they have the right information uh, and understand how to approach and pick the right products. And you see a lot of the those fame those course sellers. They're putting out things like, "Oh, here are the top 100 products to do in 2019." You know what? Are you are you crazy? Why would you ever in in, in a million years oversaturate and tell all of your students to do the same 100 products? That's the dumbest thing ever. And you see that very very common as well. So, yeah, I'm I'm on this episode with you because you know that I I vehemently hate this shit. And, uh, yeah, that's and what I, I want to call it. Uh, the whole point of getting people on to the show to talk about this is that you had different angles. I totally understand why you call people out and why you do it. Um, but I have a different perception as well is that what are the dangers behind that? What, what can that lead to further down the line? Let me give you say a quick example. You've given away a car, right? But you haven't given away the car. <laughs> no, the guy, the guy took Cash plus coaching options. Yeah, That's so he's got 14 grand plus coaching off him. So let me give you a little scenario. Let's just say it flips around. Like someone, it all goes off on the, on the back of this car thing, right? So I see, I'll go on Facebook. I'll give you an example. I'll go on Facebook and it's like, has he given away the car? Bit? Scam, scam, you know, I've been joking privately. And people <laughs> call it a scam because they didn't take time to dig a bit deeper because they read the headline. So suddenly people go on about their day. Oh, yeah, that's that guy who's meant to give away the car who didn't give away the car because they don't know the full story behind it. Now, a whirlpool can build up behind that. And mm -hmm. suddenly what could happen is all of your good deed, all the good work that you've done, you've, you, the person chose to take the money to invest instead of taking the car. So 14 grand plus uh, consult, et cetera. 
is still uh, a hefty amount, right, in exchange of a car, but they see more value in the money to invest in their business, right? Make yeah, sense? yeah. The, the whole point was like, uh, it's either you teach a man to fish or you give him a fish, right? Exactly, right. But if people misinterpret that, which they can and which they did in your group, the headline yeah, there was like one read, or two guys, yeah. Yeah, so the headline could read is like, my, my ass started to go thinking, fucking hell, we didn't give away the car. I'm going to get blowed back on seller sessions for this. They're going to add my guts for garters. Do you know what I mean? I'm looking at it. And then I'm going, oh, no, I'll look a bit deeper. But not everyone will, right? And so mm -hmm. my thing is, is then what happens when someone gets flamed out who hasn't done anything wrong, been misconstrued because the culture has been created that this is a good idea. Let's flame everyone out. I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong, you know, in the, in the Roman days, it was a stoning. Now we have Facebook. We, we trade it in because what you're doing is you're, you're trading someone's social currency, aren't you? In, in, in essence here. So my, yeah. my thing is, is where, does the, where does it begin and end? Because the irony of going into a community like a Facebook community and, and, and these pages is that it's about community. It's about helping and sharing. But, but with everyone popping up memes of popcorn, everyone loves a car crash, right? What happens then from the outside of looking in and thinking about getting involved with Amazon? Yeah, involved with commerce Danny, and Danny, stuff like that? I, I think that you, you can't walk the line here, though. Like, I think if you're trying, you can't always please everybody. You're not, exactly. There's always going to be people that don't like you. Yeah. And, and no matter what, if you put yourself in a room of 100 random people and you get to know them, there's going to be a percentage of people that just don't like you and you don't get along Agreed. with. And it's just a personality thing also. Yeah. And so when you, when you try to run this type of business, where you walk the line and you try to please everybody, all you're doing is an injustice to all the people that are then going to go get taken advantage of by the next, the guy that's dangling the shiny object and is louder than you. Yeah. The guy that is polarizing, but in a way that uh, he's attracting people too. And so, you know, you want to be polarizing as a, as a public figure because uh, it, you have fans and those fans will defend you. And then you have some people that don't like you, and that's okay because people weren't going to like you anyway. A percentage of people weren't going to like know. you anyway. I, mean, I, I don't aware. care about that. What I care about is when all of those people that do like you go, and, and they, there's a large percentage of them that are going to lose money. Now, look, we all, we all launch products, and we understand that not every product is going to be successful. Yes. But my success rate might be 88%, and Leron's might be 80%. And, you know, so the next person's might be 70. And at what point do you draw the line and say someone's teaching shit information and should be called out? And is it, is it like when 80% of their people or is it when 50% of their people are losing money? Yeah. So, you know, it, obviously there's a line, but I think it's when they're obviously defrauding people, when the content is shit and it's a combination of the two that people should be made aware. Don't take that guy's course because he's just taking advantage of you and you're going to lose your, your money. That's fair enough. I, I agree with all your points. My point is, is that where does, if this becomes a trend and it gets worse and worse and worse, where, where, where is the line? Do you see what I mean? I understand Polo. This is why I agree with Liren. I don't have a problem with what he's doing. I'm just saying, what happens to the after effect? What happens, you know, further down the line? Where does that lead that? I mean, I mean Anthony, it, go on. It, it, is there a danger of, you know, and I, I can see also, like I see your sort of side of it. Is there a danger of ex-guru after being called out, showing up in the event and somebody beating the crap out of them because they're, they've gotten so mad from seeing things online and they're a little crazy? I don't know. You know, <laughs> like maybe that's actually a serious. Well, look, we, we, we will have our trolls. Maybe that's actually. Yeah, we will have our trolls. I'll, I'll give you an example of yes. a troll. Like with me, I just delete them. But I had a guy that was on LinkedIn, see a post on LinkedIn and feel, felt compelled to leave LinkedIn to go over to YouTube to leave nasty comment. I, I polarize people as well. I totally get right. it. I'm just trying to look at it from um, a point of responsibility. Where, where does it lead to next? Do you see what I mean? Because it hasn't always been like this. And we've, we've always had these arse wipes where we should probably have an arse wipe table for all of these scumbags. But what I'm saying is recently, instead of people going, I'm, not, I'm going to ignore these scumbags over here and just get on and do my thing. Yes, they are going to get people. Totally get that. But it's getting more and more of, you know, the stoning in the group. So it's like, where, where do you draw the line? What is the next step? Like you said, you know, does someone get a slap in a, an event? What do you do? Do you know what I mean? Where is the line? That's what the conversation's about. 
Yes. Yeah, I want to hear. Uh, I want to hear Anthony. Yeah, he hasn't said much yet, and he was the one who originally done the post. So, Anthony, what's your take? I was waiting on my turn. Well, <clears throat> the spirit of the post that you keep referring to was just to open a conversation about it because of all the things I've seen in other groups. Um, Can you talk about the post, Anthony? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I just specifically asked my group, you know, what what standard do you hold your experts to? Like, what does somebody have to do to get your attention? Because I see most of the time people flaunting 30-day screenshots, and that appears to be the only criteria that people need. And I, I have been in the game long enough to have seen very successful brands fail and people who don't have a clue succeed rapidly and everything in between. And to me, it was like, I'm not so sure that your amount of knowledge on Amazon is proportionate with the amount of success you're going to have. So I'm curious what other people think. And that's where the post came from. But uh, when Danny responded, I responded to him that I was the reason the motivation for that post was that I saw uh, another post in another group where it got nasty. There was some mudslinging and you know, my, my, my take on it is like, I don't like, I, 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 I like to call people out too. People make me mad when they, when they kind of do that false negative guru crap. But at the same time, I also see the damage that it does to groups like, I, honestly, I can't get mad at you for doing shit on your own wall. Like, it's your wall. Yeah. But when you're going into other people's groups and saying, boom, mudsling, like, that post might not be the thing that causes the damage, but it causes other people to start talking and slinging mud. And the next thing you know, they're slinging mud at, at two people that are in the group. Mm -hmm. And then they're fighting. And it's like, this does not bring quality to the conversation. Yeah. Like, this is beyond you and your mission and your calling people out and, and it's actually causing negative damage to the conversation. And that is what I think should be avoided. Cause I don't think that that's, that's good for anybody. What you're At saying some is point that happens enough. In isolation. So what you're saying is it's the, the, there's the one thing, there's the attack on one side. So let's just say, uh, Brandon, you post about someone in a group and then suddenly loads of people get added to the list. And then that's what you're getting to is where the arguments start internally in the group. Yeah. Well, that's, well, that's I mean, uh, I actually, I actually did what, what, what Anthony's saying where, where I went into a couple of groups that are owned by friends of mine, yeah. uh, cleared it with them. And I said, look, I've got this evidence that this guy is a con artist and he's, he's basically scamming people. He's not a real seller. He's pretending to be, and he's, you know, he's, he's got these doctored images and these fake testimonials. And I've got, I've got a lot more evidence than I even posted where I've got like, you know, about his business and the people that are testimonials being a part of his business and, and on documents with, with the state type of stuff. But, you know, I've got, I've got a, lot of, a lot more to back it up in case anything legal were to happen because obviously libel is a real thing. So I, I wouldn't just call someone out if, unless I had it. But I, uh, yeah, I, I put it out there and I've had at least a half a dozen people reach out to me and say, thank you. I was about to give this guy my money. And I've had others reach out to me and say, yeah, this guy took my money and I was about to buy this product. And uh, I appreciate the fact I, I noticed that the information isn't very good. Or I took the time to take another course and realize that the information wasn't very good. But, you know, you, if I can reach just a few people and I, I put my own reputation on the line, that's fine. Take my master class and find out whether, how the information stacks up because you'll see that I'm, you know, that it's actually good. And, and I don't mind being polarizing. If, if you're going to compare, compare information and compare what, you know, what's going on, like, I, I, like, I understand your point, Anthony, that it becomes like uh, toxic and people are fighting and, and, and arguing with each other, but I'm saving people from making a mistake and losing their money. And I, to me, that's worth it. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. That's anyway, worth it. I, I, but that, my point I, is, um, is there another way? Do you know what I mean? The, it, what other ways is there? You, I totally agree. How can, how can this be the a controlled thing, environment? I'll cut you off there, Danny. The only other way was if I were to bring like a civil suit against him or some kind of criminal suit. Because what he's doing is, is actually fraud. And yeah. so I could, press, I, could, I could present the information to, to, to the law <laughs> and, and try to get his information taken down. But now I'm going all these extra steps. And, it, and like, do I want to go through that, right? Yeah. So the next step is, you're, you have someone that's actually committing fraud 
that's actually defrauding people and, and scamming them and conning them. And then that's, that's a criminal offense. And then, then you've got the civil suit where you've got all of the thousands of students that have paid him because this particular person loves to hold up an award that says he sold $10 million in courses, right? And so, you know, you've got $10 million worth of people that were scammed. So do, do you then take a civil approach and then you, you get all those people together and you put together a civil suit? Like, that's the next step. Or I could just put it on the wall and try to save 20, 50, 100 people from losing their money and, and getting conned. How can I? And look, you can, there's no argument on you that. Can make, yeah. You can make the counter argument too, um, Danny, which is there's something called willful blindness, right? Mm -hmm. like, like, do you as a quote unquote guru have a responsibility to whoa, actually- whoa, whoa. Hold on a minute before you start calling me a guru. I'm not a guru. <laughs> Let's get that fucking clear. Come on, Danny, no. please. You're, you're my guru. Um, <laughs> um, no, but that's why I say quote unquote, right? Yeah. As yeah. whatever, as a leader in this community or whatever, um, do you actually have a responsibility to let people know? You can make the argument, you know, there's something in, in the law also called willful blindness. Mm. And that, that you do maybe, that if you do know about something, maybe you do have a certain uh, a certain responsibility. What you get in the US, I don't know what the law is like, but we've actually, there's someone who's done a similar thing in the UK. There's, an, there's a dedicated Facebook group to some guy who has ripped off loads of Amazon people that they're all in their, this group together to fight against him. And he's got, you know, when you look up online and you, um, I can't remember the uh, places, but you know, like when you just check up on people that are scammers, there's a long history there. Right. But I don't know what, right what ends up happening people go on these courses they fall out of it uh with the person they don't get their money back and as i said there's a dedicated group but i don't think they've achieved anything there and i feel i agree i feel for them as as well it's just i don't know where the law stands i mean i've not looked into the law but maybe can't, isn't it a criminal investigation yeah uh, yeah and you know, I, I would also add that on the other side of this, what, what, you, what people don't see in the background, and I'm sure, for example, that Brandon has gotten this too, is I'll get personal messages from people that will say, hey, dude, thanks so much for posting this because I got ripped off. Yeah. And yeah. those messages also inspire me to keep doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the stuff that, you know, that I get after I post stuff like that. And people ask me sometimes, why do you post stuff like that? And I know the messages that I get. And it's like, hey, dude, uh, I'm still trying to get my money back, but when, I, but after I do, when it's over, I'm going to go public about my situation or whatever. Except that certain people don't have reach on their wall; nobody sees it because, whatever, they're not known, known person. Um, the one other thing I wanted to add is, um, I think Anthony's post is really spot on as far as like 30 day screenshot because, you know, there are uh, sellers. Uh, people, uh, I think, a lot smarter, a lot more successful people in this space doing eight figures, uh, nine figures that, um, you know, that I think are that are more successful than than, than I am. Um, but one, you know, they haven't necessarily stepped up to, to teach. Um, and two, I, I, I agree with this thing as far as sales versus sort of knowledge base, because, you know, I think that uh, whether I did a million dollars in sales or five million dollars in sales, I feel like I've, I have a knack for explaining things, for teaching things, right? And maybe that's part of my sort of special sauce, not necessarily if I've sold, you know, two million last year or 10 million last year. Um, and I, yeah, so I definitely, I, I, and, a, and, a, and a sort of a desire to want to see people succeed and help people, right? There's, there's other sort of personality traits uh, outside of just somebody's screenshot that I think sort of need to be uh, evaluated. And, you know, not everybody wants to step up and, um, you know, necessarily be in the space of like teaching information or, 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 or whatever it is. So um, I agree that, um, like, I agree to your, to your point, Anthony, that um, the this, this screenshot shouldn't necessarily be a be be the be all end all of of whether you should pay attention to somebody but I, and I, you're coming at it from the perspective of your level of success but what i'm saying is even beyond that if people were more discerning we wouldn't have the guy holding the plaque that everybody keeps alluding to that wouldn't have been a problem in the first place the fact right. is that too many people just accept that screenshot and oh, okay, you're an expert now. You're more of an expert than anybody because you just did the thing right. that I want to do. And it's like, I've been preaching forever. Like people need to hold their teachers to a higher standard. Like they just, they just do. Like 
be skeptical, even of the guys that are teaching good information, like go and find out if it works for you, do the testing, you know, like don't blindly go in. That's the reason why, that's the reason why there's so much like controversy around tools too. Cause too many people rely only on the tool. Oh, you know, I got this product cause your tool said I should like, do you, do you also right? think it comes down to the way things have sold as well, you know, with the long form copy, the NLP, that kind of thing. And yeah, the attraction to some people is like, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, that person deserved it because they shouldn't have tried to do a four hour work, work week. I'm not saying that, but with people are so, you know, what happens is people are working off emotion here, aren't they? So they sign up for these things, even on the lower cost, higher cost thing. And they're, they're promised all that glitters is gold. And as I say, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Um, yeah. So you've got a proportion of people that are maybe not actually business people, yeah. but want to cross over into doing this, yeah. but, but think that it's easy. Do you know what I mean? And they're, they're taking the short route. And we know that there isn't really any shortcuts in life, you know? Right. I feel and, like you know, I would feel better though, if people at least only took the courses from the long form sales letters, but it's so much simpler than that. Like literally you have one good screenshot, you're going to get a hundred right. comments. Everybody's going to ask you for private consultation. I've been there. <laughs> like, that's what happens. You're dealing with the most influential psychological triggers, you know, that, that marketers know how to push in order to yeah. influence people, right? I mean, all we study in marketing are psychological. What are this, you know, you read books like, you know, Robert uh, Cialdini, right? Uh, influence and persuasion and, you know, um, right now, Brandon is sitting in, a, in his office, right? We're on video and he's sitting there with a really cool mic and a cool background. That alone, that alone is persuasion, right? That alone sets me up to think, man, that guy is pro, right? Yeah. Which, which, which is cool. I mean, I, I, think, uh, I think the setup is awesome. I'm not like uh, downplaying it, right? But what I'm saying is that setup alone is persuasion, right? So we, we as marketers, know how to push all those levers that that are influencing people and when somebody sees a screenshot of you know a hundred thousand and thirty day sales or five hundred thousand and thirty day sales in their mind that translates into success and making a lot of money and yes. so 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 the the other side of that is is if you know if if brandon or if i, if I is posting the sort of counter argument that right or anthony saying hey look in look more look beyond the look beyond the screenshot because those those uh screenshots or this the person holding the you know the two comic club you know x award are such strong influencers that sometimes you know there's a need to post to for people to you know don't be stupid think think beyond that right and and i think that that's why that that would make the argument of why why we want to sort of extend the conversation beyond people just looking at, you know, screenshots or, or I whatever. I tell, I tell you another interesting thing as well, which is what people forget about is you've got the experience, the amount someone turns over and the, the ability to teach people forget that, right? I'll give you an example. When I was teaching audio engineering, I used to work at some of the top schools in London. Okay. And there were, I was surrounded like with godlike engineers in, in my trade who were far superior to me, but they could not teach for shit. They were so good engineers, but they couldn't get it across in the classroom. You know, they couldn't pace themselves. They couldn't hold a room for five or six hours. They couldn't gain comprehension. They couldn't get retention into memory. Does that make sense? So yeah. the other dangerous side is that the have a go guru thing is like, right, you hit one million, you show a screenshot, you get your guru pass, you pass go, but you may be <coughs> shit at teaching and not right. be able to get that information across. That can yeah. cause another end of it as well. So there are people out there who are doing 10 figures, eight figures, et cetera, but there may be better teachers that, that are doing six figures or lower seven figures. Do you see where I'm coming from? And yes, say, yeah, if you definitely. Want to teach something, you I need agree to with be that. able to totally. teach as well, not just go, hey, look, I've got a nice suit on, black tie, here's my guru badge, I've got me one million and pass go. That's not enough to get someone's education underway. Brandon, you're right. laughing. Sorry. What's up? Yeah, that's, that's, that's absolutely hilarious. Your guru badge, you pass go because you passed a million dollars in sales. No, I think um, you're absolutely right. Like quality of teaching matters a lot. And then also qualifying your students and letting them know that, you know, I think a lot of people will undersell the opportunity that we have and make it seem easier than it is. Yeah. Um, this isn't, 
this isn't a get rich quick scam. This isn't a multi-level marketing pay, just get six people below you and then sit back and collect their, their money. Right? Like this is you starting a real business. You're, you're building a brand from scratch and you're going to be in charge of a supply chain of, 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 <laughs> of goods. And you're going to have to do the research. You're going to have to do the marketing. When you start this business, you're going to be the CMO. You're going to be the supply chain manager. You're going to be this, the operator. You're going to be the, key, uh, the product researcher. You're going to do all of these things. So if you're not good and, and, and able to put in that time, you're going to fail. And I think a lot of people underplay like, the opportunity that is Amazon. And so they have a large percentage of students that fail. And so no matter what we do as, as, as coaches or, or in our courses, we're going to have people that give up or quit or don't put in the effort. And it's just uh, because of their human nature as a, as a person. They would rather just go back to their nine to five and complain about it every day than come home and, and work. Or they'd rather go to their nine to five, come home and watch Game of Thrones instead of working. And so they don't understand that, you know, I'm sure Liron and Anthony, like they work a lot of hours and, and we keep a lot of hours. We work 60 plus hours a week in our business. But that's what allows us to drive successful, you know, seven and eight figure businesses. So I think that, uh, you know, there are going to be a percentage of people that fail regardless of how good of a teacher you are. But I think, and to your point, Danny, the better the teacher, the less likely those people that are going to fail are going to sign up for your course because you can, you can lay that out in the beginning as well. You can lay the expectations. And I think a lot of people are too interested, especially the, the ones that are just selling courses. They're more interested in just selling courses than they are in making sure that the right students buy their course. Yeah. Totally. There, is, there is also no self-regulating sort of body, right, in this industry. There is no sort of certification program that allows you to say, hey, I can go out and market, right? Internet marketing doesn't have that. So well, the, 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 to Anthony's point and to your point, the, 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 your screenshot of sales is basically your certification, right? right? right. It's like, so, okay, I know what I'm doing. I got, I got, either I got really lucky or I have a clue how to do this business. And who, it's up to you to decide whether the screenshot is real. And then based on my content and how much you like me. And now go ahead and give me money and then gamble with five, 10, 15, $50,000 of your own money. And so that like, like there needs to be more out there with regards to people that are openly judging, rating, uh, you know, feedback on courses that isn't instantly deleted. Because in our communities, anytime anyone says anything negative, it's like, oh, that's against the rules. We have to delete it, right? And I had a group that was owned by a friend who turned off comments on my post. And I said, why did you do that? He's like, oh, I was getting toxic. And I said, yeah, it was a healthy conversation where people are going to not get scammed anymore. And these are friends of mine that also have a course, right? Mm -hmm. And so they just didn't want to get mixed into it because they want to take that let's walk the high road or walk that line, not piss anyone off type of, type of uh, mentality. And I'm like, no, like people need to be known. So what is that? Maybe we need to create our own. And, and it, it's funny because there was even a, 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 one of these guys selling courses, I don't know exactly who it is, who has a, made up their own website with their own awards and gave themselves a bunch of their own awards, right? Like, like, I don't know the sto backstory to this and I didn't get into it, but I just started reading about it. I thought it was pretty yeah, funny. Come over to my wall, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we need to yeah i need to look at that but the problem is that we need to uh we we need to have maybe uh some kind of organization of of coaches that are vetted amongst ourselves right with with our students who can post reviews honest reviews about all of the different potential courses hey so we're about to um, we need a self-managed shit can leak then I'm about to have to hop off here, but I, yeah. I wanted to quickly play devil's advocate because I feel like this is a top. This so you're going to say something and then fuck off and leave us to it, yeah? Yeah, this is the <laughs> side of the topic that wasn't touched that so I feel like it yeah. should be touched. I already expressed my opinion on how going into groups and flaming people can turn the conversation a little bit, you know, negative. Yeah. But the other side of that too, and I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying, I don't want you guys to think that I'm attacking you here. Like, you know this, but the other side of that too is as a leader, especially if you have a competing course, when you flame people, it will make a lot of people look at you. And it will, I feel like to some, it'll tarnish your name. And I know that you probably are thinking, oh, screw that. I don't care. But listen, you have a certain personality. You are hitting a certain target market. But there are just as many like stay-at-home moms, for example, who are completely turned off by that type of conversation that could also excel in your course. But they're not going to see it because they're watching you beat your chest like a gorilla and they're going, I don't, that's not the environment I want to be in. 
And, and you guys aren't the only people I brought this up to. I actually have a friend who has a course who was asking me about some marketing material. And I was trying to give him some advice on like how to reach a broader audience because these very dominant personalities only speak to a segment. And if right. you're all about, I want people who can take this and run with it to be successful, you're really all about that. Like you got to take a step for a second and think about the way you're putting that message out. So that's just my devil's advocate moment. And I want Anthony, no, and I, I, I agree. I agree with you because I've had people like sort of that I'm friendly with when I've, when I've done these sort of posts also comment on my wall and say, Hey, you're just making yourself look bad, you know? And like, you, and, and it's not that I don't care. It's that like, there's, there's no, like there, there's no balance. It's either I post it and some people, you know, think I'm I'm a jerk for doing it. And some people think some people appreciate it. Like there's no, there's no fine line, you know? Um, so I agree, you know, it might be turning people off that, that maybe would, would be good people that would, that would be interested in my content and benefit from it. And I'm turning those people off, you know, uh, it's one of the, I guess, casualties or, or consequences of, of doing it that I sort of have to accept that I don't necessarily like, but I have to say, you know, what do I think is the right thing? And, um, and I don't know, I, I, at the end of the day, it's like one of these emotional things. Like it just pisses yeah. me off to see somebody. I, I agree. I, I agree with you, Leron. Like to me, it's like, uh, to, I would sacrifice selling more courses to keep my integrity. Um, I'd rather, I'd rather put I it out there. You on that. I don't the end think of that, that is a famous saying, right? Your integrity. Hold on. It's, I don't yeah, think you're not... your integrity by, na- by dropping names. Like that's right, the no. thing. If we're talking it's about, about my integrity for me. Out, right. This whole conversation has been a positive one and nobody has said a name the entire right. time. Yeah, so right. I definitely want to challenge that point, Brandon, not, not to be disrespectful. Yeah, and no, no, I think that it, like to me, if I don't say anything and I still see it going on, then, then I feel like I'm losing my integrity. Like that, and like maybe there's a, to your point, Anthony, maybe there's a way that I can frame that instead of saying, hey, this guy fakes his screenshots, he's not a real seller and he's a piece of shit. Like I, I could, I could, I could frame that maybe a little bit differently, right? Maybe, you know, in a way that it doesn't, doesn't reflect negatively on me, but I, I don't necessarily go out and say, hey, everyone should grab pitchforks and go, go get this guy either. Like there, you know, uh, but I feel like not posting or not, not calling it out when I see it. And after seeing lots of people get hurt and then seeing him bragging about selling $10 million in courses, not $10 million on Amazon, $10 million in courses. Like to me, uh, like I, I feel the, the necessity to do that just for my own integrity and peace of mind. Can I ask you both a question as well? Did you, did you approach them and say, right, I see this fuckery going on. You've got a choice. You have a pull up on doing this or I'm going to out you. Do you ever give them that opportunity to fix up or do I did. You... Yeah. I reached out and I said that your content is bad and, and uh, that, you know, it's, it's not, you're, you're hurting people and you're just in the court in, into selling courses. And I know your screenshots were fake and just everything's instantly deleted and ignored. So obviously he knows what he's doing. And um, you know, I, at that, at that point I went public. It was, I did reach out first. Yeah. Lee Ren. Uh, yeah, no, well, for me, actually, I had a personal experience. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll give you, give you a quick example. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, part of it is that emotional tie to being personally. So person, I started out early in, the, early in this when I, you know, when I was new. Um, person had a course. The course was closed. And stupidly, I thought they actually closed the course. So I, <laughs> I, I, uh, I sent them a message. And you said, just hey, gone down, I, you just gone down in my estimation. You actually think when someone says the course is closed, it's actually right. I, I know. Sorry, go. Crazy. I mean, if you have integrity, it's closed. But <laughs> so, you know, so I sent them a message and said, hey, can I, can I still join? Sure, here's a link, $2,000, okay? Uh, a week later, I see a launch for the course. And, and by the way, at the launch before when it was open, it was 1000 okay? They sent me a link and it says 2000 you know? So I'm like, okay, they raised the price, you know? So that's stupid. A week later or two, when I see it launch again, it's at a thousand dollars. And and I sent them a message, dude, dude, what the hell? I just paid two thousand dollars for your course. I see you launch it at a thousand before. I thought you really raised your price, so I paid two thousand, and now it's a thousand again. What the hell? And the answer was, dude, sorry, it's just a matter of when you jump in. Hmm. That that was the okay. That pissed me off. That 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 angers me. That 
that puts me on a rampage. Okay. Uh, of, of, Can I uh, find that on your wall if I go back far enough? <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> please. I will give you the names. Search my wall. No, no, no. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Guys, I got to go, though. I'm sorry. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Anthony. Um, yeah, so, I mean, for, so for me, I had like a personal experience, you know, of, of just like, hey, you know, that's not the right way to, to act with your audience that you want to follow you and like you is tell them, dude, it's just a matter of when you jump in, yeah. you know, screw me out of a thousand bucks. And so then I started to say, okay, what else is this person doing? Right. And, and, and that got me on the path to say, I need to call this out. And you know, it's not the only, it's not the only person that I've called out, but when I feel like there's somebody in this community that, that, uh, you know, has sort of screwed me over, um, probably doing it to a lot of other people just like that in a very small example. Uh, yeah, it's me, it gets me crazy. Totally understand. Yeah, yeah but that, so, so, the, 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 so as much as like that's pretty ridiculous and he, you know, it's just marketing. Was the content any good? Like was, was, was like, so, are people getting hurt because the content's bad or is the content okay? So I will say that specifically the content was okay. It wasn't, they were more of an affiliate sort of um, jointly with somebody else who was teaching the content. The content was okay. Um, but it's also the same person who's faked their own awards, things like that, to influence people. It's also the same person that I saw in a webinar for their course telling people that Amazon might make their course mandatory and that they should buy the course because they've been speaking to Amazon. Amazon <laughs> might make the course mandatory. I mean, the level of ridiculousness is I, so high that I it makes tell me you so for, crazy. I can tell you for someone who has done some work with Amazon here in the UK and the red tape that's involved, there is yeah. no way in a million years that would ever, 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 ever happen. It's just too much red tape. I can tell you that now because I, even with me doing the, I done one webinar with them so far, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. There's a lot of um, yeah. steps to take, shall we say just to get it to, to that live but, arena, to get a course through like that, I think right. oh, there's, there's no way zero you could achieve. Yeah. There's yeah. no way, but if I'm a new, if I'm new to this space and I come on and I see this person, they have these screenshots and awards and they're, and they're doing a webinar and they're saying, Hey, Amazon might make this mandatory. That may be the one thing that's going to push me over the edge to say, Hey, I'm going to buy this because in, because maybe I'm, because maybe Amazon is going to make this mandatory because maybe I don't know better. And to me, that just, it angers me so much that, that you need to go to that level to try to influence people to buy your stuff because you're more motivated to take money from people than actually like doing good in this space. To me, there, there's, to me, look, I make money off what I do in this space, right? Aside from just selling, but I, but I feel like I do it in a way that has, that has integrity that actually helps people that, you know, that, that is a balance of, uh, of having a business around sort of, information and services and actually helping people right yeah. versus only one only one sided of of taking advantage of people that that i don't like and uh you know i feel i feel i feel compelled and i also feel, i also do feel that while some people may not like the negative aspect of it that most people appreciate it yeah so there, people, see, it's an 80 20 going on here so basically yeah. there's 20 percent of the audience you're going to upset they find it a bit aggressive etc but the other 80 percent right. appreciates it and you can't win it all that's 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 how I, that's how i feel um and i feel like if i saw somebody calling somebody out and and not doing it every single day every single week as their only obsession or focus but mm. which i feel like i don't do but every so often if i you know uh if I do see something that if, if I saw somebody else doing that in the space that hope, you know, that I think I would, uh, I would have the right take on it, that this is not the only person's motivation to try to take somebody else down, uh, because they're, they're doing a lot of other stuff. Um, so yeah, I feel like, yeah, maybe that turns some people negative but to me, just some, some things just upset me so much in the space that like my only, my only, uh, ability to vent is to go on my wall and say, look at this BS. Fair enough. Brendan, any parting words you'd like to add? Oh man, I appreciate you using your platform to, you know, just, I guess, have an open dialogue about this because I think that Anthony's point is very true that a lot of people look at this and it turns them off and, and we, we lose, we are sacrificing a, uh, our own image in, in certain aspects to certain people who this, who that type of calling out turns off. Um, I just, 
you know what, I don't need the money from coaching. And if I lose a few students, it won't bother me. Uh, I'd rather, I'd rather um, make sure that I protect a few people that do see the post and maybe, maybe realize that they're going to, yeah. it's a trap. So, and you know, and what I'll say is, uh, <laughs> is two things. One, uh, on that note, anybody that I've called out, I invite you to come on my, on my podcast and uh, if you, uh, open to, to, to debate anything I've said about you personally. Come on and let's, let's talk it out and see if you uh, want to defend yourself. Uh, and two, join us at Seller Sessions Live in the UK where we, we will actually I deliver. I can't believe that. After that, we've good done quality this long, we've, we, Hold on, hold on. I, I can't believe You've now just plugged that you, we've done this really long um, episode to really go into it. And then right at the end, you're selling my event. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Your, your event is, is quality, okay, right? Okay, I'm, so, I'm going to say to everyone here, I'd love everyone to come to the event, but you don't have to. Most important thing is this podcast is about doing the right thing. You're talking yes. about integrity. For me, forget buying tickets for Seller Session Live. My thing here is I love our community. I want our right. community to, to be in a good place without sounding like a hippie. I've learned a lot from the community. I've made good friends. I've met from people from overseas. I've been able to travel the world. Long may it continue. I just hope that there's, we're able to get to a place where there isn't that toxicity uh, and this trend doesn't continue and things, you know, the trash takes itself out and the market improves and, and everyone can get yes. business. That's, that's an ideal world, but we don't live in it. Yes. yes, and obviously, yeah. you know, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm joking around a little bit that on, on that note, but I will say that the, the reason why you get, super high quality people on your show is because you do have the integrity, you deliver good information. Um, and whoever is watching this and listening to this um, should consider themselves thankful that there are people in this space that do deliver awesome information. And I'm just as happy to, uh, I'm just as happy to promote, uh, you know, to promote people I think in this space do have integrity as I am to, as I am to call out, you know, other people. Exactly. And I think likes tr uh, attract likes, don't they? I mean, there's people out here, you know, I don't name names. So I'd never have them on the podcast in a million years because the same thing that you say is like, I have a different approach. It's like, I'd rather do, what is it? Nearly 150 episodes plus a year, about 150 episodes a year. I'd rather have him loads of good people on and, and filter those down and have repeat of the same people. Like you come on the show numerous times, Brandon, you've been on. Why? Because you've always got something to offer. The space isn't that big. And then with what's on offer, you can try and go to the cream. And I, I always invite new people on, try and find new people with more information. But I do go for a vetting process. And just take you back earlier on with Brandon that, that I nearly died when the car hadn't been given away because I read the news flash and I'm thinking, fuck, I'm going to be buried up to my neck in shit. <laughs> Why did I mention he's given away a car? Because you didn't get the full story until you dip in, you know, so. Right. Anyway, all right, guys, it's been a good one. Thank you for yes. joining us. Guys, yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. I'd love to get your feedback. Honestly, we're doing this because we want to get positive feedback from people. We want to raise awareness. This is about doing the right thing at the right time and looking after people in our community. From here, I'm signing off. Take care.